Bombs away, little guy. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for a rampage! Little guy, kitty cat, shock trooper. They call me a lot of things, but my name is Tigress. I'm frontline, I'm expendable. My job's to raise hell until I go down. But I never go down, baby. That's what makes me special. The boss is unstoppable. The big fellas are brick walls. The sniper's a prick. But me, I never stop. I never, ever stop. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and the Feral Rex saga has reached its legitimate climax. The sixth figure in the reformatted line, bearing the R06 designation, no less, is the shock trooper known as Tigris. His name is Tigress. What did you think he'd turn into? A koala bear? This blazing robot tiger's got the kind of surface detailing I've come to expect from the reformatted feral Rexers, and the silhouette and shape of his feline form expands on all the qualities found in Leo Ducks, with way less bulk getting in the way. As I've said before, I'm no zoologist, and I barely even know how refrigerators work, but this looks pretty friggin' tiger-like to my layman eyes. What really helps is the balance of mass, with even his thinner rear legs beefing up as much as they can to not stick out like sore thumbs that are rear legs. I also love the straight up black spikes protruding from his box armor shoulders. With the fiery palette of his Transformers counterpart, Tigris makes some calculated use of plastic color over wide area paintwork to have a strong visual punch without blowing his brush budget which was used to apply some more of that delightful and pale Feral Con gold. However, the winners of the paintwork on this guy are by far his eyes and teeth, picked out sharply in gold and silver, and adding a ton of life to his visage. This dude's got 5mm ports all over him, and what that basically means is he can store his accessories on him. My preferred method is, uh, you know, blades up here so he can stab with his shoulders, and guns down here so he can shoot with his cat nipples. Uh, but weapons aside... This dude's also got some posability in his tiger mode, and I think this is my favorite beast mode of the Feral Rexicans. I know that every single time I get one of these, I say something else is now my favorite something or other, but I'm serious. Let's start off uh, just here with the head. Uh, this head's got a mouth that can be all like, Hey, listen. I'm a tiger. And his uh, neck is on a ball joint, so it can look left and right with a pretty decent cone of vision. Uh, then this whole assembly can let him uh, look up and down as well. The assembly can go up and down. The ball joint can go up and down. Uh, all kinds of stuff can go on. If you do this too much, though, then you might see, you know, some robot eyes peeking out from the back. And that is just creepy. It also makes me think that he's actually just, like, his robot mode head is just his head. And he's, like, you know, got binoculars peeking out through these fake cat eyes. Because he's some kind of weird, I wish I was a cat, but I'm not really a cat. So I'll dress up like a cat. What are we talking about? Tigress. Uh, this guy's got shoulder posability, and it goes like this. It's all ratcheted, so he can be all like, Rawr. And his uh, arms can go outwards. He's got uh, an elbow down yonder. He's got a, another arm joint up yonder. I'm not sure really what you would call the elbow in here. There's a lot of stuff moving in tandem. And his paws can do this, and they can tilt... Uh, this is going to be important in a bit, but first, uh, I'm going to point out something that was engineered into this guy. Originally, his shoulders were going to be forwards like this, but in order to give him the appearance of a slightly longer neck, his shoulders can be slid back on somewhat stiff little tracks. I think this looks infinitely better, and I have no idea why you'd have them up here, but the options there, I guess if you want to really imply a forward sh shoulder motion, now you have like this, uh, you know, clear angled shoulder blade line. Um, so I guess that can come into play. His waist, this guy has a bajillion joints in his waist. He's got a twist here, he's got another twist here, and then he's got this hinge here, and another hinge there, uh, and so I, I think this looks really cool. This looks a lot more, uh, you know, predatory to me. Uh, but this also means, if you want, you can orient this inner joint to, instead of be tilting, you know, in this plane, you can have it tilt in this plane, so he can twist at the waist like that and kind of be, uh, be turning sideways. It's certainly not a natural motion, you have to twist a bunch of stuff to get it there, but the option is nice whether or not it was intentional. His rear legs have got, uh, again, they swivel forwards and backwards, like thus. 
Uh, they can also go outwards like thus on a dedicated hinge up here. And then you've got some leg jointage there, there, and his paws can do this. His paws can also tilt. What this means is this guy, you know, he, he's standing in a classic, you know, I'm a tiger transformer, I'm a quadruped transformer pose, which is a little bit stiff, a little bit, you know, one note. But this guy, even more so than Leo Ducks, can get out, splayed out on all fours and really look like he's going places and uh, and have a flat-footed stance when you do so. And it, it, I don't know, this is a really fun beast mode to play with because it just plants down. It doesn't feel like I'm fighting engineering, it doesn't feel like a lot of other stuff is moving when I'm just moving the parts I want to. Uh, his tail can even waggle here and here. That's important. So... I dig this guy's tiger mode, uh, and I think that, you know, the point was made by Griffith way, way, way back when they were doing the, uh, you know, the sixth member of the team was going to be based on this mold, uh, because it was felt this might be, like, you know, the most fun standalone mode, uh, mode? Mold. The mode here, however, is my favorite of the beast modes of these guys. It just feels good, it feels playable, and everything moves, and everything's solid. I like it a lot. Do I like it as much as the robot mode? I guess we're gonna find out, because it's time for us to transform. Would you believe this guy's using the same skeleton as Talon? Probably, because if you're watching this, you probably have kept up with all the news on these. Anyway, his legs use the same transformation, though they had a cool step of an additional fold for the kneecaps. A very hard to disengage additional fold for the kneecaps. Ow! I'm kind of figuring out what to do here, but it's a lot of levering and a whole lot of my fingers hurting. The rear tiger legs are also new, and the most ambitious animal limb curl of the Feral Rex Quintet, as they literally spiral in on themselves. The paw sometimes gets caught if you don't know precisely how to thread it in there, but the motion is pretty smooth for what it's doing. Everything else is as simple as it looks, but I gotta give a nod to the sliding chest panel for sealing up the torso sculpt nice and tightly. Generally, the robot mode of Tigris is pretty solid feral confair. He's even more clearly a skeletal cousin of Talon if you look at the pair side by side, but something about his silhouette feels weirder and lankier to me. I spent a while staring at him and then realized that his looming shoulder pads make the rest of his body look deceivingly small by comparison, so my own quick fix is to slide him down. It's hardly necessary, but I kind of prefer the smoother shoulder slope of this silhouette. And hey, options! Anyway, my own aesthetic neuroses aside, Tigris brings the same strong combo of sculpt and coloration that he had in Tiger Mode, with the pleasantly balanced placement of mass that I found on Talon's Robot Mode, boxy shoulder pads aside. Tigris's head sculpt is a touch small but full of character, with the red helmet and faceplate combo causing his yellow underskin and crimson optics to pop something fierce. Tigris includes two pairs of paired weaponry, bringing one more dose of doubled accessory provisions with these Ferrocon mercenaries. His lightning rifles look like scoped sci-fi assault guns, and they can be plugged into his shoulders for an extra touch of G1. The thermal swords continue the happy trend set by Talon, and are anything but scary to put into his hands. Hooray! All four weapons can also plug into any of the 5mm ports on Tigris's body. There's also a BIG gun in the box, Leo Dux's concussion cannon. Any member of the team can make use of this, but it looks happiest when mounted on the Lyo Leader boss guy. It's got the same combo of black and gunmetal found on all the team's firearms. By total coincidence, this means all the guns look really nice when piled together in a jovial stack. One more advantage of sharing a skeleton with Talon is compatibility with the wing pack. This shock trooper can take to the skies, provided he rips his teammates' wings off first. Also, you can fashion yourself a flying robot tiger if you mess around with the beast mode and rotate the torso 180 degrees. Yo, it's kind of cool that three of the five feral cons can make use of these wings, though it makes me hungry for some kind of winged rhinoceros or winged moo cow action. This guy's body's a whole lot like Talon, so his posability's a whole lot like Talon's. For instance, he's got one of them sick ball jointed heads so he can really get his waggle on. And he can get such a waggle on, he can just get all, like, just staring at the sky. And while he's looking at the sky, the head on his torso can look around as well and go like, Hey, listen, this whole scenario is screwed up. Uh, which is kind of just, you know, anyone who wears, uh, you know, a big tiger head on their chest, they're a screwed up person. Almost as screwed up... Uh, as someone who would just cover themselves in chitin and pretend to be a grasshopper man. But you know, we all have interesting college lives, don't we? Yes, I did. His shoulders uh, are 
lovely ratchets all over the place, double jointed elbows, biceps, wrist swivels, blah blah blah, like little claw on his uh, on his hand here. You can have it sort of just chilling out like this. I think that looks fine. If you don't like it, then you can do that. Uh, also, if you turn his hand like that and rotate this up, uh, he's stuck with his elbows bending this way, but now he totally has like a tiger claw punch kind of deal. You know, all forward, down, down, forward, fierce, as it were. His uh, inner torso bits work a lot like talons, and by that I mean there's all kinds of rotating stuff going on in here. Uh, he's got a rotation up here, and he's got a rotation here. Uh, this middle section gives him uh, some ab movement, and like in Tiger Mode, if you want it to go the other way around, he can rotate this midsection around so that now his abs bend backwards. So it's uh, you know it's all about what you want and how much you're willing to rotate this little midsection uh, rectangle back and forth and back and forth. Incidentally, he's got this thing in here. Uh, you gotta rotate this up too. And there is a thing inside. What is that? Well, let's get a knife and wedge it out of there, as you do when you don't know if something's a bomb or not. Uh, and in this case, something is totally a bomb. This is uh, the bomb he uses in the comic book. And uh, it's a neat little extra. You know, for whatever reason, he stores it inside his chest. Um, you can get him to hold it somewhat decently if you kind of just wedge it in here. It doesn't have any kind of 5mm compatibility. Uh, he just kind of holds on to it. <laughs> And goes like, hey guys, I got a bomb, who wants a bomb? And, uh, yeah, if you want to store it, you just ram it back into his stomach and tell him he better do it right, or, you know, you'll just hire a new expendable shock trooper. His hips. Got some of that clickety-click. Some of that louder clickety-click. Thigh swivel. Uh, you can wiggle these if you so choose. Oh, I love that noise. Oh. Uh, there's no double joint on here, but it's still a pretty deep knee. And, uh, you know, like I said, this guy's basically got talons set up, so his feet are more or less identical. They're on uh, a little ball socket connection down here, and they can tilt if you want. They can tilt way too much. You can also do this, <laughs> if you like. I wish this locked in a bit better, um, but it's got to go somewhere, I guess. And yeah, you know, he's got secret kneecap tail attack action. This guy's posability is pretty good. Uh, the the way that his head, I was, I was making fun of it earlier, but the way that his head can let him, you know, hunch over and then look forward like this, uh, that does a whole ton for this guy, just making him look like he's walking along and getting ready to pounce. And uh, he's just as well balanced as the other Feral Cons. His articulation is great. Uh, it's all solid. It's all, like, beefy. And uh, this guy just feels good. Like, he's thinner than Fortis and Bovis and Leo Ducks, but, like, don't get me wrong... He can take it, man. He's built. He's friggin' Feral Rex material. This guy knocks my wall over. So, yeah. Good toy. Fun toy. Uh, and a durable toy. A bonus bag of bits called THE COMPLETION KIT may also be found in Company of Tigris. Its main attraction are 5mm peg hole equipped forearm fillers for the robot modes of Talon, Fortis, and Bovis, as well as some paired peggable weapons to go into those filler blocks. The secret upside of all this is that these pegs and holes add to the already plentiful universal 5mm system that covers the bodies of the whole Feral Rex team. Even if you don't use the weapons with the Feral Cons themselves, you can use them with a whole lot of other toys. There's also a gold rectangle which you can use to fully armor and enhance the groin of a king. Which king? We'll, we'll, we'll find out someday. Also, you can rip Tigris's face off. You know, fun. Okay, so I know I've implied this before as we walk down the road of Feral Con releases, but I am really, really sure when I say that I think Tigris is the strongest standalone figure of the five. He's on the lower end of the team's price range, both of his modes are strong and poseable, his transformation is quick and fun, and he's got a basic suite of accessories alongside 5mm compatibility across the board. If you've been waiting this long and still only want to buy one member of the team, Tigris or the upcoming Felisaber are the solo acts to look at. Felisaber being Tigris with a new head and colors and something, something, something. 
Rolling my chair back and taking in the fearsome Feral Fivesome in person and in complete production form, I dig it, man. Tigris fits in well, though he is the small animal among three bulky beasts and a huge pair of wings. In the robot mode lineup, he blends in seamlessly, completing the group's symmetry and adding one last extra shot of red and orange. I know that many will go all or nothing on a combiner team, so to you crazy folks, look forward to a fantastic bookend on the pre-Gestalt experience with these guys. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and having messed with Tigris in person, I'm a lot more excited to see how Felisaber turns out. Griffith was right, man. This is a fun piece of solo toy. But he is the last man to join the main Feral Khan group, and... I'm really sure there's something else these guys are supposed to do. Uh... Let me get back to you on that.